A good Yom Tev. Today is Sunday, the 11th day of Nisan, Yud Aleph Nisan. It is the birthday of the Rebbe. And that is the, it's a big Yom Tev. But uh, Hashem brought the Rebbe to this world that literally revolutionized the world with, with the thousands and thousands of shluchim scattered around the world, reaching out to more and more people Jews to get them closer to Hashem, and we'll have the non-Jews to get them closer, to do what Hashem wants from us, and to bring a peaceful world. The world of Mashiach, that's the Rebbe's ultimate goal, which is our goal. And um, at this day, this is the, the day that we connect to the Rebbe. It is a, a blessing to each and every one of us. The Tanya that we learn, the daily Tanya, is also something that the Rebbe very, very much encouraged. It was established by the, the previous Rebbe, his father-in-law, and uh, the Rebbe in countless, countless of letters always encouraged people to learn every day the daily Tanya, along with the Chumash and Tehillim, that we have everything in the link in the description. Also, the Rebbe encouraged, we're getting closer to Pesach, the Rebbe encouraged very much to make sure that every Jew should have a handmade Shmura Matzah. To have the Shmura Matzah to eat by the Seder. And if you need Matzah, you can contact us and we'll, God willing, arrange that. And also, the Rebbe encouraged the people that should uh, sell their Chametz for Pesach, meaning that a Jew is not allowed to own any chametz, which is anything from uh, leavened bread, whiskey, vodka, things that have the grains involved. And uh, so you need, a Jew is not allowed to own it. So we have, uh, we have a way to sell the chametz that you, that you have to a non-Jew. And it's done through the rabbis. It's uh, not a simple transaction, but you don't have to get rid of the chametz, it can stay in your house, you put, you put it in the side, and you authorize the rabbi to sell your chametz. He sells it before Pesach, the day before Pesach, and right after Pesach, he buys it back from the guy, from the Andrew, and on your behalf, so it's yours again after Pesach. So to do that, you can also go to the description, there is a link. If you are in the U.S. Eastern time zone, you can go to our link, Chabad Shibset Bay. And if you're any other time, time zone, there is another link for Chabad.org, and you put in your zip code where you are. So let's begin with uh, the Tanya Shia today. It's a Daka, today it's a Daka, Shemakarebes, Esa Geula. And we're hoping today we're continuing in chapter 39 talking about the mitzvahs with Kavana. So as you remember, last year we discussed different levels that the neshamas reach after being in this world. The souls can reach the levels. Some souls reach the level of the world of Yetzira, some the world of Berea, uh, the world of creation, and, the, and this is the spiritual world talking about if uh, if a person, depending on what kind of, of studying Torah and doing mitzvahs, in what way it was done in this world, based on that, the neshama reaches that level. So if the neshama, if the service of Hashem, the Torah and mitzvahs was done with an intellectual love, which is the world of Berea, if it was done with a natural love, it reaches the lower world of Yetzirah, and that you can go back to yesterday's class, the Friday's class, and, you, and for more details. And then we also spoke about those neshamas that are in all the way in Atzilus. There's a very, very few individuals that Sadikim, like Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, but this is a world beyond it is a, a complete, those tzaddikim are in complete nullification to God. 
They don't have any self desires at all. And the question, why do we need to know this? Why is it relevant to us? And the Alter Rebbe goes on to explain, because by knowing the reward of what the soul receives, we will know the nature of the mitzvah itself, what the mitzvah is, does. It's because the, what it says is, scha mitzvah, mitzvah, the reward of a mitzvah is the mitzvah itself. Meaning, usually when you're talking about some, someone does something and it gets rewarded, an accountant goes to work and gets a check in the end of the week. So when you look at the check and you tell what type of work it did, you can't. Because the reward is not related to the, to the work that it did. But if, let's say, you decide you want to build yourself a house and you work, and the reward, what is the reward? The house itself. So when you come and you look at the house, you see, oh, this person worked to build the house and here's the, here's the results. So the same thing is with the mitzvah. When you do a mitzvah, if you want to know, if you want to know what kind of mitzvah it is, look at the reward. Being that the mitzvah that is done with feeling of love and fear reaches to a certain, to this level of whether Bariya or Yetzira, and you know that this is the mitzvah itself. The mitzvah itself reaches to that level. And therefore, the neshama goes up to this world. And what does it enjoy? Enjoys the light of Hashem, basking in the light of Hashem that comes as a result of that very mitzvah that you did. And that is why, when we know this, we have a whole different approach of how we do a mitzvah. Because some people do mitzvahs habitually, out of habit. And that kind of mitzvah doesn't really rise up. Doesn't go to the inner parts of the higher worlds. So when we understand this, our mitzvahs will be done in a much greater, much better way. And therefore, our neshamas will also benefit from reaching much greater levels. So let's see inside without the emphasis. The reward of a mitzvah is the mitzvah itself. Pirush. This means shemischara neida mahusa umadrigasa. We can know the essential nature and rank of the mitzvah by its reward, by the nature of the light generated by the mitzvah and revealed to the soul as its reward. Nasid al Rebbe spoke yesterday about, this is, by the way, the lesson for Shabbos, for the 10th day of, of uh, Nisan. We're going to then continue today's lesson of Sunday, the 11th of Nisan. Says the Alter Rebbe, Now we will not concern ourselves with explaining hidden matters. As we spoke on Friday, the, 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 those levels of tzaddikim that reach in the world of Atzilus, complete nullification to God. That's not something that is the average person, even regular tzaddikim, are not in that level. Meaning that the great tzaddikim, who are at the level of a chariot, whose divine service comes under the heading of hidden matters, because it transcends understanding. It's way beyond. What are we concerned about? Things that we can, we, that, that we can comprehend. Only those matters revealed to us to which every man must aspire, meaning only with those levels of divine service, which may and ought to be attained by every Jew, as follows. It says, mahus madregas Hashem, 
one must know with certainty that the essential nature and rank of divine service with fear and love revealed in the heart. And derived from the understanding and knowledge of the greatness of the blessed Ein Saif. This reward we know that its place, meaning the level of such service of mitzvahs performed with such motivation, is in the Sephira of Berea. So we explained in the earlier chapters that when a person serves Hashem with love, there's two types of love. There's a love that is generated from understanding. When you contemplate, you meditate on the greatness of Hashem, and that creates a love and fear of Hashem, that is a higher level of love. That reaches up to the level of Berea. And therefore we know from the reward that the level of Berea, so we know that this is the nature of this mitzvah. That's where the neshama reaches, the world of Berea. Then there is another type of love. There's a love that is not generated by understanding, but it, there is the hidden love that a person naturally has to has for God. And all you do is to arouse this love. And as a result, doing the Torah mitzvahs, following Hashem's commandments. It's, in, it's, in, it's, not, it's not something that you really sense, but it's a revealed love that is in, in, the, in the person. And the service motivated by natural fear and love hidden in one's mind. Not emotions experienced in heart, but mental awareness of one's inborn love and fear of God, of which it was said earlier that such service is rewarded in the world of Yetzirah. In the lower world, the third world, this is Yetzirah is the Yetzirah. From this reward, we know that its place is in the ten sephiris of Yetzirah, the ten attributes of the world of Yetzirah. So this is at least, we have a, 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 a love that comes from the natural love to Hashem, and it's not something that is really palpable and you feel the love, but it's a, it's a conviction in your mind. You know that this is the right thing because of the love that you have, the natural love to Hashem. But if a person does things without any emotions, just habitually, without the fear and love, then that kind of work does not rise up to the higher worlds. But divine service performed without arousing one's fear and love to a revealed a reveal state, even in one's mind, the Haino, meaning that the service is done without arousing the natural love hidden in, in one's heart, so that it will emerge from the hidden recesses of the heart. To be revealed at least in one's conscious mind, and in the latency of his heart, so that it might evoke, if, if not passionate fervor, then at least a mental resolve to cleave to Hashem by fulfilling the mitzvahs. So if a person doesn't even have that, not even in, in the conviction in his mind that he's, he's doing it out of the hidden love that he has, and, it's, and, and he feels that this is the right thing to do, but if he, do, if he does it very habitually and the love remains hidden in his heart, if instead the love remains hidden in the heart as in its native state, as it was before the divine service, such service remains below in this world of separation. World of separation is the world 
in this low world, which seems separated from Hashem. In the level called the externality of the world, as opposed to the sefiris, the, at, the spiritual attributes, which are internal, at, the internal aspect of the worlds. And therefore, it says, "The aim book it has not it, it has not the power to rise and to be absorbed in God's unity." Right. Meaning the ten holy sephiros. Yeah. Okay. So the ten holy sephiros. Yeah. 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 Now, without fear and love, it does not fly upward. The Torah mitzvahs that you study, if you do it habitually without fear of love, it doesn't fly up. And it cannot rise to stand. It cannot rise to stand before God. It was once uh, that when the Alta Rebbe was released from prison, Afterwards, he went to visit one of the great uh, Gaonim, the scholars, which were not Hasidic, opposing to Hasidus, and he asked them some questions. One of the questions he asked them, you said in the Tanya that if you study Torah without the fear and love, it doesn't go up. And he asked them, what's your source? So the Alter Rebbe told them what we just read. It says clearly in the Zohar. The Zohar says that it doesn't fly up without love and fear. So the Alter Rebbe told him, uh, so this rabbi, his name was Rabbi Yeshua Zeitlish, he told to the Alter Rebbe that we do not rule from the Zohar unless there is support from the Talmud. So the Alter Rebbe told him that it's a clear statement in the Talmud, in the tra- tractate of Pesachim. Pesachim is, talks about Pesach. So this, he was a very, he was knowledgeable in the entire Talmud. And he couldn't find, he was thinking in the Talmud and the tractate of Pesachim, and he couldn't find it, he couldn't even know where it was. Now the Rebbe showed it to him. He opened up the Talmud in Pesachim, it says, there's two verses in the Torah, in the Talmud, it says, Ki at shamayim chasdecha, your kindness is until the heaven. And then there is another verse that says, Ki me'al that your kindness is, is great above the heavens. And the Talmud asked this question, the Gemara asked this question, it seems to be contradicting. It is until the heavens, until it is above the heavens. And the answer, the Gemara answer is that the difference is that this is when you do it This is when you do it lishma, and this is when you do it shalai lishma. When you study teira lishma for the sake of Hashem, it's behal shemaim chazgot from above the heaven. And when you do do teira shalai lishma without the fear and love of Hashem, and it's only at shemaim, it doesn't rise above the heavens. So this is what Alter Rebbe answered them, and that's what Alter Rebbe says here. Now we're going to continue to the, today's lesson of Sunday, Yudal of Nisi. Now, says so the al when we're saying that when you study Torah, not for the right purpose, it doesn't rise up. So, the al is going to explain that there is two levels of studying not for the right purpose. There's one level of studying for the wrong reasons. You're studying Torah for, because you want to be wealthy, you want to be famous, or whatever, for the wrong reasons. That we're going to discuss tomorrow. But today, he's talking about even if it's for the, without any reason, just doing the Torah, studying Torah, and mitzvahs habitually. This inability of one's divine service to ascend to the sephiros applies not only when one when one's motive for engaging in Torah and mitzvahs 
is actually shalalishma, not for its own sake, meaning for some ulterior motive, heaven forbid. We're not talking about that. Even if it's doing just habitual. It is also applied even if, uh, is a, as the verse describes it, this fear of me was like commandments of men done by rote. It's doing it out of, out of habit. Pirush, and that Rebbe explains what does that mean? Machmas hergel shehurgal mekat nusay. Meaning that one's service of God, one serves God out of habit acquired in his youth. And the Rebbe points out here, when he's saying in his youth, that when you're used to from youth, your father trained you, your teacher trained you from youth in the kindergarten, that you have to wake up in the morning, you have to wash your hands, you have to do this, you have to do that, and you keep doing it in the rest of your life. Then you didn't invest anything in it. But if a person acquired this habit, not in his youth, a habit that you, inqu- that you acquire in your older age, in your adult life, then it starts with lishma, doing it for the sake of Hashem. Obviously, you're not, you're not doing something unless you invested something in it. You, invest the, you understand the meaning, you want to do it. In that case, as the, Alter, the Rebbe explains, that in that case, if a person, let's say, gets himself into the habit of doing something positive, and then he gets used to it and he keeps doing it, then it's considered lishma in a sense. It's considered for the right sake. Because he started it in the, in the right way. Is so even if you got used to it, you still are doing it for the right sake. That's why also in the morning when you say the blessings, it's important also to have this in mind. You have to do the blessings of the Torah and the mitzvahs with kavana. You have the proper intent. And you start the day with saying whatever I'm doing today, serve Hashem for the right purpose. And then during the rest of the day, you don't, even if you, don't, if you don't really think this every single minute, you start your day that way, then the Torah mitzvah that you're doing on this day is doing right. So that's what Alter Rebbe says, if a person did it from, uh, acquired in his youth, <laughs> having been trained <clears throat> and taught by his father and teacher to fear God and to serve him. The mamash. But he does not really do it for its own sake, lishma. Ki lishma mamesh if shabalei seirus tachilu rechim wativim because for it is impossible to serve God truly lishma without arousing one's natural fear and love at least. At least you have to arouse the natural fear and love of Hashem. Lo itzion meester alevel agilu b'moyach v'talnu mislibe al kofar by bringing them out from the concealment of the heart into the re- revelation, at least in the mind, and at the, la- the late latency of the heart. It's like we said before, at least that you have a conviction that they, I'm, I have to do it, this is the right thing to do. Now, the Rebbe said, because that's just like you're, gonna, you're not going to do anything, whatever you do in life, if you're doing something for someone else, there is one of two reasons why you're doing this for someone else. It's either you love the person or you're afraid of him. There's a fear or you love him so much that you're fearful of losing his friendship. So that's, those are things that drives the person to do things for someone else. You don't do things habitually. Someone else doing things for yourself. So when you're doing the mitzvahs in the same way, at least you have to involve the love and fear of Hashem, not, not to do it just habitually. Because just as one does not do something for his fellow to carry out his friend's will, unless he loves him or fears him, so 
Lemalois Ritsainoi Levad. So too, it is impossible to act truly for God's sake, solely in order to carry out his will. You cannot do it truly for God unless he remembers and arouses his love and fear of God to some degree in his mind, thought, and at the latent level of his heart at least. If he cannot arouse these emotions openly in his heart, and also if you arouse only the love, but you do not arouse the fear of Hashem, the greatness, the awesomeness of Hashem in your heart, that is also not a complete service of Hashem. It's like he compares in Tanya the love and fear of Hashem, like a bird that has wings, the love and fear of the wings, to make the bird fly. The mitzvahs need wings. If you have only love, then you have one wing. You cannot fly with one wing. So that's what it says. Furthermore, the arousal of love alone, without the arousal of at least the lower level of fear of God, this, this fear of God is hidden in every Jewish heart. So if it does it without the fear, this, this is not called service, as will be explained later. So this is the end of today's shir. A beautiful lesson we learned about doing the mitzvahs at least the lowest, the lower level of love and fear of Hashem arousing in our heart and by understanding the great level where the neshama reaches after uh, the life in this world, we understand what the mitzvah is. So we'll see you tomorrow, Mr.